One of the country's oldest telescopes is situated at the Gill Street Observatory in Johannesburg, and we're told it's often used by one of the country's oldest astronomers. Producer Phoebe Anderson put together this story. Tony Overbeck was turned on to astronomy by his grandfather back in 1928, and it quickly became a passion for him. To his credit, between 1952 and 1993, He's collected data on more than 200,000 variable stars. And at 75, he's the oldest serving member of the Transvaal branch of the Astronomical Society. He's built his own telescope at his home in Glendower, and it's difficult to tear him away from his hobby at the best of times. But we persuaded him to take us on a trip back into the past, as we visited the old Union Observatory and its surrounding buildings in Gill Street. This was the first centre of its kind to be built on the reef, and it was opened by Lord Milner at a gala event in 1905. But the observatory was only completed with the installation of this big refractor telescope, designed in the United Kingdom by Sir Howard Grubb. In its day, it was one of the nine biggest telescopes in the world, and it was mounted at the observatory in 1926, where it was used primarily for the study of double stars, and for the discovery of asteroids and hundreds of minor planets. But times have changed, says Dani. Throughout the world there are dozens of telescopes like this which in, at the time were doing sterling work are now in mothballs, some have been dismantled, some are now used as theatres and others are used by small groups. It's a pity, but one cannot stand in the way of progress. Astronomy, like everything else, has progressed a lot, and the emphasis today is on astrophysics. Modern scientists are using far more sophisticated telescopes to give us a richer understanding of our universe today. And the modern equipment on land can even make use of lasers to reach out for reflected light from objects far distant from our own Earth. Not to mention the high-tech space probes which can now be sent out far beyond this planet. In fact, by today's standards, things like the old rope and pulley system, which was used to open the observatory roof here in Johannesburg, involving a lot of sweating and tugging by hand, look like devices out of the Middle Ages. Technology, quite simply, has left the Johannesburg Observatory far behind, as history shows. This observatory was closed in the 1970s when it was decided to concentrate all the optical astronomical facilities in South Africa in one site near Sutherland in the Karoo. That meant the large telescope from Radcliffe in Pretoria as well as the telescope from here had to be moved. Ever since then, uh, Sutherland has become quite famous worldwide for its astronomical work. But the ridge above Yeovil in Johannesburg, the highest natural point in the city, still plays an important role in the work being done by the Astronomical Society of Southern Africa. This ridge to us is the seat of astronomy in the Transvaal because it's been used by professional and amateur astronomers for the last 90 years. The land was donated to the Transvaal government by the Besetanite family on condition that it be used solely for scientific and astronomical purposes. During the 1970s, a number of new domes were also constructed on the ridge as donations from private families in Johannesburg. And it's from these vantage points that hundreds of society members are hoping to watch the comet make its impact with Jupiter. Dani himself will be spending the next few days back at his own house, locked up in his own special spot behind his homemade telescope, pointed, of course, directly at the planet Jupiter. But what's to become of the old Union Observatory, and who's taking care of it now? Estate manager Jenny Nell explains her plans for the future. We took over this property from the CSR in 1989, and next year, in June 95, we'll be celebrating our 75th anniversary, for which we're hoping to set up several permanent exhibits of scientific and engineering interest, 
and we're hoping that we will have kids by the busload coming up here and being excited by the prospects of a career in technology. The technology of our past is also the road to our future, and it's only with inventions like this old telescope that we've made our progress in astronomy. It's perhaps for this reason that we're reluctant to discard these devices altogether. After all, one day they could just show our children what a long road we've travelled.